Chris Reed is the Vice President of Platform and Technology Engineering at Nissan. Here we are at the Management Briefing Seminars. You've been talking all about electrification. What are you here to tell the audience? Well, you know, it's about our vision, right? So it's, it's about, you know, obviously we've got the Nissan LEAF. We've been in the market for a while. We say we're the first, right? But it's about what are we doing going forward? So we did a little bit today, two things. One is, what is our vision going forward as a company, right? We, I think we even talked about that together, right? Nissan Intelligent Mobility, you know, and which embodies like our, our kind of our future vision of zero emission and zero fatality, right? And then you have the LEAF. The LEAF falls right into that perfectly, kind of embodies our vision going forward. And I was saying, you know, in the past, we used to have a lot of business plan kind of visions, you know, profit, market share, that kind of stuff. Not the same as a product vision, right? You know, just like when you're developing a car, you've got to have that vision of what the customer is, who the customer is, how she works, how he works, and you kind of align the whole company. So that's kind of what we started with, our vision. And we looked a little bit back at what we've done to get to this point and also what we're going to do going forward. You know, like, for example, eight new EVs coming out in the next few years. Isn't the uh, infrastructure for charging the key component to really get in this accelerating? It totally is. I mean, I, I mean, I use a lot of stories with my wife because when we were driving an EV, we were just talking about EV a second ago, right? You know, driving a leaf around and temperature and things like that. But, um, you know, I had, I, I had one of the previous models, right? The new one's got 151 mile range, as you heard. And, uh, you know, the previous one was like 107. And I had that one, right? And I'm, I, I, um, I didn't have a charger in the house. I, I, didn't, I didn't put it in yet because I'm a builder. I get that kind of, I, I, I can do it myself, right? But I'm busy. So the point is though, I thought it would be so simple that my wife, she could just use chargers at the library or go to my office or something like that. She didn't think so. But again, that kind of reminds us, the engineering side, about what the customer really wants, right? They want to have seamless charging wherever they go. So I think infrastructure, it doesn't have to be everywhere. We're not talking about in the roads, right? That's a little bit too futuristic. But I'm talking about if you were going to the store, if every time you went to Kroger or you went to Meyer or you went anywhere and you had a charger there, you, or the airport, whatever it is, you know, it'd be totally different if every time you left from where you were stopped, you had a full tank of gas, a full charge on the car, right? So infrastructure in general is the next big hurdle that we have to you know, overcome. Certain parts of the country are already there. When do you think we'll see it? Maybe not every single place, especially yeah. like rural areas, but where, let's say 80% of the public can count on having an electric charger nearby. Yeah. No, I totally agree with you. I mean, you know, obviously we, we kind of look at where we sell a lot of the leaves. It's kind of the smile, so California, Texas, around the corner, up to the New, New England, right? So, I mean, those areas I think are natural, right? I think, I think the evolution of EVs in, as a whole are going to definitely be in the, you know, in the populated areas where it makes sense, where you can afford to invest in a, in a charger or any of the infrastructure. And then the rural is, you know, is going to come years to come. But even autonomous drive, right, it's not going to be use, usable in the center of the country, homeland, right, where you got um, long distances between place and you know less less infrastructure in it as a whole. As you know, car sales are declining. The uh, crossover segment is red hot. But if you did an electric crossover, it's a little bit bulkier, a little bit more mass, maybe not as much range. How do you balance that? Well, it's a great point, and I, we talked about that a little bit today. So you know, we're definitely re recognizing that shift in customer behavior, right? I mean, it's obvious, right? Going to 70% truck, 30% car. So if you don't have a crossover EV, I think you're going to be missing the boat completely. And we're trying to get widespread adoption. But as you said, I mean, I think you know, it, it's you know more range. You got a little more weight. You want to have four-wheel drive, everything. You want the whole package because the customer has no patience or tolerance for not having what they want, right? We can say, it's an EV, there's a few compromises, not going to work, right? You need to overcome those compromises, so we need that range. So I think with the advancements in battery technology coming, bringing down, of course, cost is a part of that, right? You've got cost and mass and weight, you're trying to get the range and balance of everything together, but uh, we're working on one, it's going to be 300 plus miles um, in a crossover, you know, four wheel drive is going to have the whole shoot and match, and um, I'm excited to see it. And, and if you see the images, you know, that we call it the IMX, this is one of them, but um, yeah, very modern and, you know, it's going to be fun to drive, it's going to, it's going to overcome that issue with uh, crossovers. Some EV proponents are saying once we get a full infrastructure for charging across the yeah. country, that maybe automakers will consider putting shorter range vehicles out there with smaller battery packs, not as bulky, not as heavy, not as expensive, because you know that you're yeah. going to be able to charge with a level three charger almost everywhere you go. Are you guys thinking about, I mean, you just mentioned that you're going to come out with a 300 yeah. mile range one. Is it possible that in five to 10 years, we're going to back off that? I think so, actually. I think, you know, we're, it's like a, it's a little bit chicken egg, right? Before you have the charger infrastructure, you've got to have the confidence, and confidence comes from range. I mean, we can talk about people all day about the right balance, but in the end of the day, I think uh, range is going to be getting us over the hurdle. And then once you become comfortable with it, you start to trust it and believe it as a, as a mainstream approach, you know, for cars. I mean, we're selling a lot of leaves right now, but believe me, it's still a small percentage of the market, right? 
And um, as I think this like, acceptance, you know, like how many times, you know, I don't necessarily use Facebook a lot, but you know, something like that where you were probably like, yeah, I was a holdout, right? I'm like, I'm not doing that. First of all, I don't want people to know where I'm going, but the point is, all of a sudden, my parents are on it, everybody's on it, right? And it becomes mainstream and normal. We need to get EVs mainstream and normal. You gotta do that with range first. And once you get range, then you become comfortable and you catch up with the infrastructure. I think absolutely you're right. I mean, when you know you want a, the cheapest possible car, you're a college kid or something, or you're buying a car for your college kid, you wanna have something that just works. And um, right now, there's no business case for that, but I think it's gonna come. When do you think we'll hit the tipping point with the infrastructure being ready? I think it's about Three, five years. Five off. years, yeah. so maybe the middle of the next decade yeah. or a little sooner than that. And I think, I mean, it's rapidly increasing. You know, you've got that, um, you know, the settlements that are out there that are rapidly injecting a lot of chargers out there, and we see those aggressive plans. But I think there'll be a tipping point, and um, it's going to get better every single day or every single year. But I think about five years out is when it's really going to become more mainstream and accepted. Because as you know, there's a wall of BEVs about ready to hit the market. Yes. You just mentioned all the ones that you're coming yes. out. That's my fear for the industry. So many BEVs hit the market all at the same time and there's just not enough consumers out there yeah. to buy them or who want them yet. Yeah, I mean, you're right, but in reality, you've got, you've got a, that's probably over the next five years anyways, right? We're going to, it's our, kind of our move 2022 pro, you know, plan right there. So that's four years away. So I mean, that four to five years away as they start to ramp out, it's, it's a chicken egg, right? You got to get, you got to get enough out there that people want them. You got to, that motivates people to put in chargers. That, you know, it's a kind of a self-motivating thing. Mm -hmm. Real good. Chris Reed, thanks so much for your time right, today. Done. Always fascinating to talk with you. Really appreciate it. Thanks yeah. a lot.